Okay. Now, one of the things that we know gluten can also do is it can contribute to poor digestion, which leads to malabsorption, which leads to reduction, okay, in nutrients. So when we have a reduction in nutrients, we get vitamin and mineral deficiencies in essence. This can also impact the mouth. And this is actually one of the reasons why gluten sensitivity can affect the mouth. So aside from the fact that we know gluten can contribute to some of the oral damage through bacterial changes and through inflammatory changes, we also know that lower levels of nutrient absorption occur. And we know several nutrients play a major role in the health of your mouth. So we'll go through some of the kind of more common ones. So looking at this one, you can see iron can cause angular stomatitis, which angular stomatitis is when the, the corners of the lips start to crack. So if that's ever happened to you, some people it happens more aggressively in colder weather uh, because the lips get really dry in colder weather. But if this is happening to you all the time, think iron deficiency as a potential possibility. Both iron deficiency, also vitamin B2 deficiency can cause angular stomatitis as well. Um, and this leads to, again, it leads to sal saliva or spit building up in the corners of the mouth and those microorganisms build up and that can lead to, microorganisms start to embed in those cracks and that can lead to painful sores. You've also got zinc, zinc deficiency. This is one of the most, this is probably the third most common deficiency associated with gluten sensitivity. Uh, iron being number one, vitamin D being number two, zinc being number three in terms of, of um, of my experience working with a lot of people with gluten related issues, but zinc deficiency is very, very important. Zinc being too low can actually cause your mouth to become very dry and it can give you susceptibility to gum disease because of zinc's role that it plays in, in the production of proteins that are important for collagen formation. Zinc also though, when it's low starts to affect taste. And many of you talking right now about, about the, the Rona um, have lost your ability to smell or taste. Um, and this alters what happens when taste and smell change is we generally tend to gravitate toward foods that are higher in salt or higher in sugar to get flavor from the food. So it actually can, can compound and lead to poor dietary choices as a result of seeking out flavor. We also know that B1, B2, and B3 can cause inflammation of the tongue, something also referred to as glossitis, inflammation of the tongue, and um, very, very common. So the tongue would be beefy, it would be large, and it would be red. And some people actually have glossitis, and because they get have glossitis, it closes their airway, and then they can't sleep very well, and then they go on and they get a diagnosis of sleep apnea. So those of you may be struggling with sleep apnea, but you don't know why, Check, have your doctor check your tongue for glossitis. If it's swollen, then you want to start asking, why is it swollen? Could it be a B vitamin deficiency? Could that B vitamin deficiency be caused by gluten, right? Gluten exposure. And if it is, the simple solution is change your diet, change your nutrition. And that might change your sleep and that might improve your energy and that might help you with weight loss. Again, that it's a, these are cycles, right? So additionally, um, aside from inflammation in the mouth it leading to pain and in bleeding gum decay, right, makes it difficult for you to chew or to speak. So it can start to impact, you know, how you chew your food. If you're bleeding, if there's pain, um, you're going to be more cautious around chewing and around your food, and that's going to affect your nutrition even further. Then we have B12 deficiency. Now also B12 deficiency can also cause glossitis. It's very, very common. But it can also lead to bone loss around the teeth. B12 deficiency, actually, I've talked about this before, can elevate a chemical called homocysteine. And homocysteine leads to bone loss. Elevated homocysteine leads to bone loss. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's a risk factor, has been identified as a risk factor for, for bone loss, as well as heart disease, which is what most people know this chemical for, is its risk factor associated with heart disease. But B12 deficiency, Elevations can create elevation in homocysteine, causing more decay in the bone of the teeth. B12 is also important to form some of the um, elements of teeth. And so this is another reason why we'll see periodontal disease begin to develop with severe enough vitamin B12 deficiency. B12 can cause painful ulcers in the mouth to form as well. So aside from glossitis, 
aphthous ulcers can also form. We know that vitamin D deficiency, um, one of the side effects of vitamin D deficiency is an enlargement of the adenoids, so your tonsils get too big. And how many of you grew up, just the audience, polling the audience tonight, how many of you grew up and had your tonsils removed or had a tonsillectomy or an adenoidectomy? Just say uh, yes in the, in the uh, feed if you've had a tonsillectomy or an adenoidectomy. And you know, I say that because I want to point this out. Vitamin D deficiency is one of the top deficiencies in gluten sensitivity. How many people develop enlarged adenoids as a result of not having the ability for their immune system to properly regulate so those tonsils will swell? Um, when your tonsils swell, aside from those tonsil stones and the bad breath, right, but it can compromise tooth integrity and it can create abnormal patterns in the alveolar bone of the jaw. Why? Because you need vitamin D to absorb calcium. Remember, when you eat calcium from your diet, the vitamin D is what tells the intestine cells, the small intestinal cells, to absorb that calcium from that food. And that calcium then gets deposited into your jaw, right? And so if you don't have adequate D, then you're, you know, there's a disease called rickets, which is, which is a vitamin D deficiency that leads to softening of the bone because calcium absorption is affected as a result of the vitamin D deficiency. Now, one of the other things, let's make a little room here. One of the other things I wanna talk about in terms of this loss here, this bone loss that can occur with vitamin D deficiency is that steroids chronic use. Now we're not talking about a one time or a one day use, we're talking about Consistent use of steroids, six months plus, steroids deplete D, calcium, and magnesium. Those are nutrients depleted by steroids. So maybe you're taking steroids for chronic pain, or maybe you've got a problem in your mouth, a chronic inflammatory problem, and your doctor's giving you a steroid to apply. Again, understand that steroids cause bone loss. So if you've already got an issue here, you could just potentially, you could exacerbate it. So if you've been put on a steroid for mouth inflammation, you wanna to talk to your doctor um, because again, steroids can compromise the bone integrity. One of the other things that, that oftentimes is done uh, for osteoporosis or people that think they have osteoporosis is they go on a class of drug called a bisphosphonate And what these drugs do is they cause micro fractures in the jaw. The reason I say this is a lot of you uh, that follow the show have, have chimed in in the past about, about osteoporosis. This class of medications designed to make your bone, okay, your bone thicker actually makes your bone brittle. Okay, yeah, it makes it thicker, but it makes it thicker in a brittle way. And so what happens is there's a disease process called osteonecrosis of the jaw. And again, what you get is micro fractures in the jaw and that can inhibit your ability to eat. So caution around certain medications in your hygiene of your mouth and your health of your mouth. Bisphosphonates, micro fracturing of the jaw, steroids can cause alveolar bone loss in the jaw and make it harder for you to chew your food. We've also got vitamin C. Now vitamin C is important for forming collagen. Um, the collagen is what, your, is what your gums are made from. It's a type of collagen. And so if you don't have adequate vitamin C, then your gum tissue can start to break down. Later stage vitamin C deficiency is called scurvy. And one of the side effects of scurvy is tooth loss, right? We'll see the, tooth start, the teeth start falling out. Um, and that's because, again, vitamin C produces, helps to produce that strong collagen that anchors the teeth into the, into the jaw. Uh, it can cause a regular formation of dentin as well and alterations of dental pulp. So bleeding gums, delayed wound healing in the mouth. So if your mouth heals very slowly, remember when you get a cut or a sore in the mouth, it should heal in a couple of days. If it's taken longer than that, you might suspect, suspect vitamin C is playing a role in that process. And then again, what I mentioned earlier, defective collagen formation leading to B6, another B vitamin can lead to periodontal disease anemia. So what happens with B6, you can develop a sore burning tongue. So if you've ever had a tongue that started burning or was super sore, that is possibly vitamin B6 deficiency. But the anemia that B6 causes, this is a tricky one because vitamin B6 anemia can be 
what we call a normocytic anemia. What does that mean? The way doctors typically diagnose anemia is they do what's called a CBC. A CBC stands for complete blood count. And so what they're measuring are these different markers. One, they're measuring hemoglobin to rule out iron deficiency anemia, which is smart. They're measuring something called hematocrit, which is, which is uh, important as well, and it relates to iron. But they're measuring MCH, MC, oops, MC, and MCV, which measure size and color of your red blood cells. And a lot of times, these, these will be normal, but a person will still be anemic. That's called normocytic anemia, whereas traditional anemias, you'll see um, low values for these markers. MCH and MCV, unless it's a B12 deficiency, in which case you'll sometimes see high values for those markers. But in a normocytic anemia, which can be caused by vitamin B6 deficiency, your blood work can look normal. So it's important if you suspect that, that your doctor looks at your vitamin B6 levels specifically. And one of the best ways to do that is to measure them intracellularly. Then we have vitamin A. Vitamin A deficiency um, can impair tooth formation, so especially in children, lack of vitamin D or vitamin, I'm sorry, vitamin A, lack of vitamin A or vitamin A deficiency can lead to impaired tooth formation, the, the delayed or, or an absence of the teeth actually developing. So if a child doesn't have teeth developing appropriately, consider vitamin A as a potential possibility, the deficiency. And then enamel hypoplasia, meaning an inability for the enamel to properly form but also vitamin A is necessary for the epithelial tissue. That, that's the tissue in the gums, the tissue around the skin to properly form. And so a deficiency in that will manifest as mouth sores, among other things. As a matter of fact, a number of research studies show that you know, low enough levels of vitamin A can cause GI inflammation that can hinder the gut's functionality and ability to work long term. So a really important nutrient, which is commonly low in those with gluten sensitivity. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.